I want to take you through what is referred to as the Romans Road. Several verses from Paul's letter to the Romans that highlight our condition as well as the remedy through Jesus Christ. And there's hope through Jesus. I just pray these three words sink in from this video. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. Very, very simple, but so true. And we can read this and have our blinders on and totally miss that point, but we need Jesus. And I pray again that that's applied to your life. First stop, Romans 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. No, not one. Isaiah shows us that our righteousness before God, the good things that we do, are as filthy rags before him. And Jeremiah shows that our state is desperately wicked. Our hearts are desperately wicked, and who can know their depths? So we're in a miserable state. The next verse is in Romans 3, verses 11 through 18 here. They also state that our throats are as open tombs. That it's as if we have the poison of snakes underneath our lips. As well as our mouths are full of cursing and bitterness, our feet are swift to shed blood, we're prone to running after sin, and we need to hate sin in our own lives. But it's our, our state. Who's guilty of sin? And what is sin? Well, first, sin is disobeying God's commands. And literally, it's an archery term where if we miss the bullseye by just a little bit, that's sin. So you miss the mark. You miss the mark. And so we're missing the mark of obeying God's commands. We're doing what is hateful in his sight. Well, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned, we're all guilty, and fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short. We can be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Paul comforts the believers in Rome, his audience. But again, our state, we're all guilty of sin. Our next thought, Romans 6.23, what's the penalty for sin? It reads, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The penalty, the wages, the payment for sin is death. And spiritual death, whenever we sin, that separates us from God. We need to repent. It's what we need to do. Romans 5.8, that even though we do these things, it shows God's love. Well, we are his enemies. Romans 5.10 states that we are his enemies, separated from God. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 even states that our blinders are on without the gospel shining on us, that we can't see our wickedness and that depth without the light of Jesus shining on us. Well, Romans 5, 8, God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners and his enemies, Christ died for us. And that amazing love that Romans 5 talks about, well, maybe for a good man or a righteous man, someone would you know, consider dying, but he would actually do it for real. But here we have Jesus actually doing it, being a sacrifice for our sins. Hebrews 9, 22 states that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And Jesus came to die in our place because the penalty for sin was death. And he took our place. Praise God. Romans 10, 9, and 10. The next stop on a Romans road tour. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that one believes into righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is what the apostles were preaching. This was the message, the tenets of the faith. And Paul makes note of that earlier on in Romans 10. That This was the message. We see Peter preaching through the start of Acts, early on in the early church, that as a result of all these miracles that the Lord is working through the Holy Spirit, the tongues in Acts 2, the healing in Acts 3, continually doing works and wonders and signs uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pretty awesome. But as a result of this, Peter had the crowd and he preached to them this message that Jesus was the Messiah. He was a chosen one of God. He was the Christ who has come to save the people from the sins that they were guilty of. We see also Peter was preaching that Jesus was crucified at the hands of lawless men. We are guilty. Our sins nailed him there. Again, hate sin. And also that Jesus was exalted by God the Father. And God our Savior, providing his Son, reaching down again to enemies so that they might become his friends. Peter's application. We need to repent. We need to turn away from our sins. And we need to believe and trust in Jesus. Put our faith in him for salvation. So remember, we need Jesus. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, and that's to the glory of God the Father. But will you be willing or unwilling? That's where I pray you are willing and that you see all that Jesus is, all the wonders of who he is. We can have assurance if we're on the willing side. Romans 5, 1 and 2, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can be made partakers of that grace through him. Romans 8.1 shows us that there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who are walking according to his spirit. In Romans 8.38 and 39, what can separate us from the love of God? Well, neither death nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, are you willing? Do you know Jesus? Because we need Jesus. If not, again, we need Jesus. And it's something where we need to repent, we need to turn away from our sins, we need to believe in Jesus and cherish him. Because he is the author, he is the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. We need our focus on him, and we need Jesus. And I pray that that sinks in, that you choose Jesus, you find him, you do not rebel against him, but at that day when we all bow, that you may do that willingly, and with the knowledge that you have been redeemed and been made to be at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, and have a great week.